Hey, it's Randy Smith from Lone Pine Kennel here. We're going to do a little bit of a prenatal to uh, weaning video here on, you know, dealing with mama and pups and and uh, care of the pups during, before, after. And uh, this is Bertha here, a line bred dog from my kennel. And my son and I trained her and uh, She's out of world champion Biffy Sue and uh, Sonny Phipps is uh, Lone Pine Louie. The pups are out of Bone Collector Semen. We got five healthy pups here, four females and one male. They're uh, getting real close to weaning age here. So we've got Bertha in here in the fight. She probably over the next few days there we're going to keep spacing out the feedings more. They're, they're eating solid food really good. Uh, we got a welping box here that uh, this this part of it here was just added. It's a, you set it right down onto the main box whenever the pups get big enough where they could come out of there. But prior to that, it's just a low box with a bumper around. And it has a heated whelping nest in the middle, which is a big help uh, keeping the pups warm without having any problems with them getting a chill or anything. This building is heated also. This is the first week of March right now, so the pups have been in here through some really cold weather. Some folks that will ask the size of the the whelping pen here. That it's, it's just a little bit short of four feet by four feet, and then you just go in the center there. I would highly recommend getting these whelping nests right here. You just you have to have like a, a false floor under it. This is a pan that sets in here on top of the three quarter inch plywood. You just put it in the center right there. Now, the, the, actually the bigger the better. I mean if you have, these these were built four by four because of a four by eight sheet of three quarter inch plywood, you know. But um, it's real easy to put this, this bumper guard around on here then and that keeps the mom from being able to squish them up against the side. We're going to talk a little bit about like if you're you got a female that comes in heat and you've decided to to breed her. Um, this is Bertha here. Uh, say say you got a female that comes in heat. You've been watching her close. Uh, if you if you're not going to do progesterone testing and everything, and you got a live male dog there that you're going to use, it's pretty easy. But um, I would say that like if you're just gonna take the best shot that you can about breeding a female once from the time that you first notice you know that first spot of blood or whatever like 13 days has been the best marker to go off of for me for for years and so say you um, you know she comes in heat and that's your plan I would first thing I would do is vaccinate her with like a good nine way vaccination make sure that she's uh, doesn't have any parasites, wormer with um, Avamac or whatever. And uh, the, the next thing is is to make sure you keep her nutrition uh, at, a, at an optimal level. Um, you know, a, a real high grade dog feed. I supplement with different products that we'll probably talk about here a little bit later. Uh, but the main thing is is that you want to keep your female up. This she, Bertha's been feeding pups now for almost three weeks her back line she's full she's not drawn down she's made tons of milk for her babies so uh, keeping good care of mama is the key one of the key things to having a nice healthy litter of pups let's say we, we've got our female bred and we had success now uh, she's she's gonna have pups uh, this this product right here is an antibiotic cephalexin that I put the female on about 10 days prior to her uh, whelping the pups and I keep her on this for at least two weeks after this kelp keeps her from uh, getting contracting mastitis or it keeps her from getting an inner uterine infection which is you know can be deadly just a couple of these one of them once in the morning and one in the evening is the way I do it uh, can keep you from really getting into a mess so so a lot of people are not gonna have or spend the time whenever 
the female is going to whelp the pups like I, I have here. I have a camera inside this box here that goes to my phone. So whenever we're uh, getting close to the time, I can keep an eye on her 24-7 and know she's getting ready to, to go into birth. So the, the other thing that you want to do is use a rectal thermometer uh, to take her temperature whenever you know you know normal whelping is like 63 days. If you take her temperature and you get a constant read at like say 100.5 or 9 about normal and she drops down one degree you know that you know she can she can start at any time so that's a good indicator but so most people are just gonna say well she's close and they look in the box I mean, she's had pops through the night or whatever that that's normal but you know whenever I have litters here I just can't stand the thought of losing one so we're, we're with them all the time so that when, when that's the case this oxytocin is a, a great product that what once the female has had her first pup you can I give her a quarter of a cc either after she's had the first pup or every hour through, throughout that. You don't know how many she has in her but usually within 24 hours she's had all of her pups. So that, that comes to a, another thing that is, is wise to do is you can go get her x-rayed after you, you're pretty sure that she's done and to make sure that there's no pups left in her. What I do is, my, fortunately, my cousin's a chiropractor He's got an x-ray machine in there. We can just take her in there, get a shot from each side, and you can see whether there's a pup in there. If you have, I mean, it's a good way to go from spending 500 bucks at the vet to, you know, paying 50 or whatever to get an x-ray real quick at a chiropractor. That's, that's, that's a, if they have an x-ray machine and you got a decent country chiropractor, it might help you out. This is a, like an all-natural supplement uh, product that women take prenatal to help with milk production. You can. You can give the female uh, one of these a day. Seems to seems to help up, up her milk production. If you have a large litter, that becomes real important. Also, through the the whelping process, whenever she's having. The This is a product uh, made by Elite Nutrition. It's called ASAP Puppy. If you don't buy anything else for the pups for, to, to supplement them, th this is very important. All, all you have to do when these puppies are just right out of the womb, practically, is just open up their mouth. It tastes good to them. You just give them a little shot in the mouth. I just these guys here. I have them. They're they're. Their path, they're they're out of the woods, so to speak. But we can just 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 crack its mouth open a little bit and just give them a little wee little wee shot in there. They, I, I have one. Let's see, which one was it here? I think this this female right here was basically born dead when she when I delivered her. She was breech. She was all pale there was no color you know, on in her face or around her nose or anything and I I gave her mouth to mouth and just uh, kept just just cut my hand like this and just kept blowing it when I first blew into her lungs you could you could hear her lungs pop like they opened up and I just kept just kept giving her CPR and I just seen the pup's mouth open just a little wee bit like that okay so uh, I just kept just kept massaging the pup 
Here, here's another thing that's really helpful. When those pups come out of there and they're wet, this is just like a baby snot sucker. Just open their mouth up, stick that down in there with it, with it compressed like that. And I, when I did that, it pulled a whole wad of mucus out of its out of its throat. Then you can just take and compress it and put it right up to each nostril, and you'll hear it suck that moisture that that wet out of their nose. That that's important. And then you you can hold the puppy up to your ear. If you can hear that rattling sound in there, just keep doing it. Just you, you, you think you're not getting anywhere, but if you just put it up to its nostril and just keep sucking that throat out like that, you'll get it out of there. You can also take the pup down and like keep, keep agitating them like this, keep stimulating them, shaking them a little wee bit, and get that mucus out of their throat. So once the pups have, once, once they have been pretty, you know, all delivered, Probably, ever, I'd probably say I did these last two litters that I had, I probably gave them this ASAP puppy like 10 times a day. Just a little wee shot in their mouth and they, it just, it just, it's like gunpowder. It just makes them come, come right out there. They're strong, they're stronger. You can just see it. And uh, I just ordered that there was like a pack of like 50 of these. But if you're going to have a litter of pups and you've got, say, 10 tubes or whatever, it, it, would, it would get you through, save a pup. So, especially like you, you, you go in there and there's a pup that's been pushed to the side. Like, it, there, there's, there's plenty of people that like, have saved them like totally on this. This has colostrum in it and uh, all, all, everything that the puppy needs to survive. So, I would highly, that, that's, that's really, really good stuff there. So say we're into the, but like this is, this is another one, GI equalizer. Keep that gut health good with the pups. Give them a little shot of that a couple times a day. Into the second day, I, I worm the pups like on the second day. Just give them a little shot of safeguard in the mouth there. And I worm them every week until they leave here. And I just, that every other week I, I do it with strong pace or safeguard. And this is just horse one that you can get in tractor supply. It's it's safe, you know, never, and you want to make, you, you, you got to make sure that those puppies are parasite free. They're basically born with them. So if you let it go on, you're feeding worms instead of the pups. So really important to keep them warm. Coming straight here, worming one of them. It's about the right amount for a little guy like this. It's, it's not scientific. It's not, you can't give them too much or anything, so. Whenever your female is raising the pups, and it's good to take her temperature every day. If, she, if just by chance she gets a, an elevated temperature, that, that means it's the onset of an infection. Get her to the vet. If, if that you can lose females with uterine infections. The cephalexin, it, it will, you know, like 99% of the time prevent that, but nothing's 100%. So if you get an elevated temperature in that female, be real concerned about that. Let's say we're having trouble with a pup now. Really good milk replacer. You can, in emergency, without any issue whatsoever, go to Walmart and get goat's milk. You can just get a, a, a quart or a pint of goat's milk and use it. It works fine. This this is better. This this has uh, colostrum in it. Plus, I don't know what, but it, this stuff is like feeding them the real thing. So this is just like a regular baby bottle. Uh, we'll have to look and see um, how many. Uh, it's it's a nine ounce baby bottle. Okay, so five scoops of this puppy back in the bottle and then you can you can keep it in the refrigerator after you use it. Now a lot of people want a bottle feed but I tube them but puppies want to you, you just can't ever seem to get the nipple right they get too much they're packing they're choking they're getting it in their lungs and then you get pneumonia with the pups so let's get this mi mixed up here Usually, like if it's in the, we've got the heat on here. If I, I have a, 
to cheat on all this stuff, but I'll have a couple gallon of water right there near the heater. So the water is like already preheated. But if you, you just want to make sure that you're not feeding a, feeding a, uh, a newborn pup cold milk. You want to make sure and have it warmed up because they have a hard time keep, you know, keeping their, their body temperature for the first few days. So I just put this in this bottle, shake it up real good, of course. Okay, so we've got our milk replacer here. This, this is a, a tubing kit. Okay, they call this a cat, tubing catheter. It just comes with, you can order them online or whatever, this just slides up on here like so. Okay, this, this one holds uh, 35 ml. Okay, so it's, it's real easy. What you wanna do is, this has a mark on it already, but your your newborn puppy, what you want to do is, is lay the puppy down and go go to the last rib. It's these ones are so fat you can't see the ribs, but whenever the newborn puppy there, you want to hold that there and bring it out to its nose. He don't want to cooperate. But mark it with your finger and put a mark on there with a with a Sharpie marker. Okay? So you know how far your tube's gonna go down to the bottom of the puppy's belly. So all I do, I just use the bottles for the, they make it real handy to deal with the milk. Lube that up a little bit. Okay, so whenever it's a newborn pup, usually you're gonna give them about five to eight cc's there you look up what what they recommend as far as I just go by what the the puppy's belly feels like you know if it's in it if it's full you can see it's so anyway it is super super easy to do this it's super super safe it's usually like on the left side of the puppy's mouth for, for whatever reason the catheter will go right in and the puppy's swallowing the whole time okay so you just bring the catheter in now these pups are big so it's deep in there but all you have to do then is you just inject that milk pull it off and what what you've done whenever you've got a little pups that are in danger usually what happens is they get dehydrated so they, got, they start getting pushed off to the side. The mother knows that they're not doing well. If she's not a superior mom, she'll just let the thing die. You tube that pup like that, and you do it every three hours, you're well on your way to saving that pup, okay? So there, there's other things that you can do then when they're dehydrated. How you can tell if they're dehydrated, you take the skin on the back of their neck, and if it doesn't bounce right back like that, if it stays, if it stays lifted up, the puppy's dehydrated. That, that's like black death to a pup. So the next thing you want to do is you want to hydrate the pup. We're still into saving this weak pup that you have there that has been kicked out of the nest. So we've, we've got a tube fed, so we know, what's, we know what's in its belly. We've got a good product in there that we know that's going to help us save that pup. Okay. So say that this pup is really dehydrated and in bad shape. This, this is just a generic Pedialyte. I have a bunch of it. It's, you, this is stuff, a lot of the stuff that you can use that would like save these pups lives, you can go to Walmart and pick up and you know, I mean, for a little bit of money, save them. So, okay, say we got this pup that is listless, it's weak. You can see its little hip bones sticking up. It, it has been born the weaker one and the other ones are pushing it out. Okay, so we've got a tube fed. We can just take a small three ml CC or uh, syringe here, the small needle on it. The, these just come with like uh, the vac vaccines that you buy. You can get them at Tractor Supply or whatever. You always keep syringes and needles on hand, okay? Make sure we get the air out of there. Okay, so 
Okay, so this little guy, it's we're, we're in do or die mode here now. Okay, so there's nothing to be afraid of. That's why I'm showing you what you know, like tubing and actually doing this to the pup. There's, you know, most of the time it's like if I don't do this, we're going to lose this pup anyway. Okay, and you still might, but these are these are important things. Okay, if the little guy is really bad you can do it in in five places on the pup they call it the four corners you can you can inject this this electrolyte solution here here back here at both back hips then and right up here at the top if the pup is not severely hydrated but it's hydrated you're um, i mean it needs hydration it'll make a bubble like on the back under the skin right there okay that's what you want then the pup is able to absorb that and whenever they get so dehydrated they they get where they can't latch and they can't suck their 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 good is gone okay if you have what i do then on the other hand throughout the day, you know, each day whenever I'm working with the pups or whatever, this, you want to always keep this, this pedi un unflavored Pedialyte, make sure it's unflavored kind, okay. So all you have to do is just open the pup's mouth and just give them just a few times a day, give them a shot of that Pedialyte in there. Keeping them hydrated is so important. A couple other quick, easy things. Here's a probiotic that you can get like a tractor supply or whatever. Keep in mind whenever mama is through all this, she's eating everything that is in the box there. She's cleaning those pups. She has eaten the placentas and everything. Okay, good to keep her gut health going. Probiotics is, is the best way to do that. Okay, the, the other thing for pups, whether they're weak or whether they're not, you can go to the grocery store and get beef liver or a butcher that it's a byproduct anymore. Mostly the people, you know, at a butcher shop, they're pitching it anyway. So you take the beef liver, put it in a pot and boil it, boil it down. You can cut it up into pieces, however you want to do it. Then what I do is save that liver, feed that to the mama. It's good for her. Then the water, you save that water off of that. When the pups are weak or keep or keeping them strong, most mostly everybody recommends just giving them liver water if they're fading, if they're if they're falling off it. I started giving it to them a couple times a day when they're doing well. Keeps them keeps them doing well. Just take that syringe, just like I did with the uh, with the Pedialyte. Suck out a CC or whatever, and put it right in there on there. They'll just they'll suck it right down. It cheap easy way to start to get them pups strong and get them on the road to doing well this is just some of that liver water i was talking about and you can just pour it into something you can get it sucked up out of but you just take your now these guys are big but um just take your little guy that that's in trouble or not, just to, just to keep them doing good. Just watch how they do. Just go easy. He wants it. That's it. Those enzymes in that in that liver will make your pups robust. It really help them. Here's a little trick to so that you've got real hot water that you can use for clean up or to mix milk with or whatever. Or I use it to heat feed up for the babies. Is you just just keep a keep a gallon of water in there. If you keep the lid on it, that water in there is like near boiling. And I just set the feed dish inside there, put the lid back on there. I got hot food like in a couple minutes. This is another product from Elite Nutrition, Essential Dog. It, it's like vitamins, minerals in it. Uh, I had a litter of pups that uh, I got their their uh, calcium uh, out of balance. Okay, so the pups were they were eating, and 
all of a sudden one day they're they're like wobbly on their legs and they were like kind of dragging their their back ends around and it just went from one to another so started putting essential dog on their in mixed in with their feed recommended dosage and this is good for all stages of life for dogs mixed it in with the feed three days they were back 100 percent then so one of the number one killers of pups is if you if you get mastitis in your in your female okay the cephalexin it, it'll it, it generally will keep you from having trouble but it's good to check the mama when she's laying there or she's standing up if you if you check her milk you squeeze her they, they just they've just fed off of her so it's okay now if a if a female has mastitis that drip will have a will be stringy and it'll fall down off of her teat slow if that if that if that's the case then it, it's you you've got mastitis okay so if you have that you're in a world of trouble you, you might have to tube the pups and, and do all, all the work yourself what you can do is a lot of times it might be isolated to a teat or two and what you can do is like put a band-aid over them you want to make sure that 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 pup can't can't get that mastitis milk it's a it's a killer for them so if you do that what you have to do is put hot compresses on like wrap, wrap this area right here say this is a teat that, that this is a quarter or whatever you want to call it that has mastitis in it take hot rags and hold on there and squeeze that get that worked out of there but it's it's problematic more for older females in my experience so it's something you really need to keep a lookout for it's one of the main reasons why I try to prepare them pups to be without the mama as soon as I possibly can. So getting them on feed, you know, helping to supplement their feeding with tubing them, whatever, you know, so that because so many sad stories come from the mama's milk not being good. So if you have a female that has had trouble in the past, this is what I would do. Go through the normal process and give them pups a couple days to be on her. Normally the onset of mastitis is past two days. So if you let the pups on her for two days, they get the colostrum. What I would do, take the mama away from them because she, you're, you're gonna end up losing them. If, she, if, if she's had it in the past, she's probably gonna have it the next time. So you, you just have all the products ready, tube the pups every three hours and you'll save them rather than because they'll just fall off one by one, tilt that head back, they're dehydrated, that, that milk is poison to them. So if you, if you know that you've had trouble, be prepared. If, you, if you've not had trouble, it's good to check the female. If you, if you put your hands down on and just go over her, if, the, if any of those quarters feel hot, it, check them especially because that, that's that's where you're going to have your trouble to start to to get my pups on solid food is this it's real it's real simple get just buy a case of, of uh you know real good you know rated puppy food brand or uh, type of canned dog feed okay i take it and i take like a bottle right here mixed with milk replacer and put it in a blender Put the, put the can of feed in there first, then just add the milk replacer until you get like gravy consistency product there then. So then what I do is, is just have that in a little container or whatever. And on, on the eighth day, I just start taking that feed on my finger and touching it on their tongues and they'll, they'll start They'll start to lap it. They're, what they'll want to do is latch onto your finger. So I keep doing that. The first couple of days, you're gonna need to just almost do it out of your hand. And then as the days go on, I make it a thicker, don't, don't add as much water. You can even add Pedialyte to that, you know, so that you're getting uh, electrolytes into the pups. But, then after a couple days, I start, you know, just like having it in the palm of my hand here. 
and hold their heads over there and let them start. Then after about the third or fourth day, you can have a little dish or something and put them in there. You start setting them in there, they'll just, I mean, they're gonna be covered in it, but they'll, they'll start to really work on it. The, the quicker you can get them on solid food, you know, you're starting to transition into getting them away then. Okay, so we got our puppies like into the second week. This is, this is the puppy food that I feed. It's high standard, same as Joy, all the, the made by the same, same people. This, this feed here is real small. Okay, so it's, once, once it softens a little bit, you don't even have to like, a lot of people like run feed through a blender or grind it up or whatever. You don't even have to do that with this. So um, what I do is take like whatever, however much I'm mixing up for my litter. I take half of this puppy food and then this here is raw ground deer meat, deer burger. And I just kind of, uh, you know, no, it's not scientific, but about half and half. And then if the, if the pups are not having any trouble at all, you can just use, and I just take this, this water that's real hot in here. Take a scoop of it so that it covers everything up. You can add a milk replacer to it too if you want, but I leave it, maybe leave it sit for, for 10 minutes. Just mix it all up there. They turn into wolves whenever you start feeding them this. They, now I know that, that, that this is going to be controversial that people, you know, say, oh, you can't. These pups are less than three weeks old. They've been eating this, this mixture from probably less than 10 days, about, about 10 days, let it get soft. They do fantastic on it. I mentioned earlier about uh, like what I supplement my females prior to and during the, the whelping process is uh, I feed them tripe, raw tripe, which is raw cow stomach, okay? It is nasty, it stinks, but they love it, okay? They, they will fight until like, I get it pulled out of your hand. It, it's, it's surprising as nasty as it is. But if you just Google the, advantage, the, the nutritional advantage of feeding dogs green, they call it green tripe, it, that, that's their term for raw but it's like the canine superfood, okay? Old time coon hunters fed it year round. They would go get tripe, they, even in the summertime, if you just had it in a barrel with water, it will keep because of all the enzymes and all that, the, the gut in there. But I keep mine frozen or in the wintertime, just feeding it fresh as I get it. It is fantastic. You're gonna have a healthier female, lactating she's going to produce milk that is outstanding for the pups it keeps her build up you're never going to have a female you know you everybody has seen them where they're they're just drawn down to nothing their hip bones are sticking out you know you're not going to have that I mean you'll, you'll when if you look at them from above you wouldn't even guess that they had any pups and uh, and I and I also supplement whenever I feed them then their regular regimen of dog feed I do just about the same as I did for the pups as I add the ground deer meat with it. Mm -hmm. Now, deer, you don't, it, the deer meat for the, for the mother doesn't have to be ground. I have it ground so that I can feed the pups. But, you know, I, I've had people ask me, you know, well, I got this dog that's just like in bad shape or it's hunted down and I can't get it. I tell them, well, you just go, go out on the highway, go two miles, pick up three deer, put them in the back of the truck, Put your gloves on, butcher the deer, put it in the freezer, feed the dog that, you, and it, they're, they're, it'll be like an amazing recovery. So the canines were put on this earth to control deer. If you feed them deer meat, 
they will thrive. They will look like that they've been in MMA practice. I mean, they are just, they'll explode with muscle. So, uh, you know, there's, there'll be controversy about it, I know, but I t this is all from experience. What I'm telling you, I'm not a vet, but what I'm telling you is everything that I have done for years that works for me. All right, well, this is, this is the next thing we're gonna talk about. So I did a lot of research on incubators, uh, you know, the, the, the value of having one or whatever, it's, it's off the charts really. Like breeders that are breeding really high-end, expensive dogs where they're selling puppies for 10,000 or whatever, you know, a piece, they have these. Okay, so I realize in the Coonhound world, we're, that'd be like a, it's like a, a dream, but you know, puppies are increasing in value today. And if you, you know, you go to all this, like this is a frozen semen litter here out of Bone Collector. You can't get the semen. You know, it's almost all gone. Uh, you know, the, the, the desire for people to have pups out of like that is off the charts. So uh, my, my goal was save them all. So I went for it. So this thing is like so easy. It takes all the guesswork out of everything. So you can just, you just fire it up. The, the, the temperature settings are right here. I had, I had it set on 83 degrees the whole time that I had these pups. And I had the humidity set at 50%, okay? This, it has a pump, the DI water or whatever in there. It says, you know, if you get one, it'll recommend. So, so it doesn't clog the system up, there's no calcium or anything in the water. You don't want to use this tap water in this. So anyway, it pumps pumps the water up and it's got a humidifier in here that blows it, you know, keep, keeps that circulated. All you have to do is just set your pups in there, close it up. This is the, this is the oxygen machine. Now I bought this brand new from the company that, that sold me the, the pet breeder. But you could, you can get these uh, on eBay, online or whatever, people that are selling them, like people that have had them at home for, you know, breathing problems or whatever, and they didn't need it or they passed away or whatever. So just turn it, turn it on, and uh, the recommend setting is between one and a half and two on there. You just, you just dial that in. There's a ball on there that tells you what the concentration of oxygen is. It pumps it in through this little tube. So whenever I had these pumps and they're in that mode right there, say they're, say the mama has fed them and, and cleaned them and everything good and they're sleeping and you, I'm, I'm my, my goal was is I was not letting them alone with the mother like for a minute, at least for the first week, okay? So what I did was when she was done, they were fed, they were sleeping, they're quiet, I just put the puppies in the incubator and they give me like two to three hours of freedom where I could go do whatever I want. I locked the mom up in her kennel, put her out in the exercise yard or whatever. Now the first couple days, mama don't like that. But after she gets accustomed and trained to being away from them or whatever, you know, whenever they're, whenever they're sleeping and they're fed and they're quiet like that, I mean, you could just leave them right on a nest like this, but I just did this. I didn't want, didn't want any unnecessary chances so that's why I got the machine so anyway whenever they're laying there quiet and they're fed there's no need for that mama to be in there to where she could get restless and roll over and lay on one or step on one or whatever so when they're taken care of and they've, they've been cleaned up they went to the bathroom they're quiet get her away from them for a while does her some good to take a break and they're not in danger all right, so say, say you have a, a puppy that's, that's in trouble. You can take your oxygen line and just take like a water bottle and drill a little hole in the cap and stick this line into there and just put that as a nose cone right over the puppy's head. And that oxygen will like bring them back I mean, that's what they're lacking, you know. So, like that little that little girl that I told you that I give CPR to and stuff. That whole next day, I just gave her little little doses of oxygen, and then plus she was in the incubator for you know two or three hours at a time and getting the oxygen put to her. If you're going to get one of these, some people say 
you can or it doesn't matter to get the get the whole thing get the oxygen so your pup the, when the puppies are laying in here they're not shivering they're not struggling to breathe they're not they just lay out and sleep and their every bit of feed that they take into is creating body mass for them and getting them one day closer to freedom. So the timing is, I mean, once, once you have these puppies that they're eating really good into, I mean, mo most everybody recommends that the, the pups be with the mother for like a month at least, okay. But you can still get that same effect without having, a look. some females when these pups start to get this size and bigger and the pups get really aggressive, they're you know, in their, their teeth, their, their bite mama's, you know, teats and their udder and everything. Some females could snap at that pup, kill that pup on you. So once the, here in about um, another three or four days, I, I won't have birth in with these pups at, at all anymore. But what I'll do is, is two times a day, she's gonna get engorged. She's gonna have a lot of milk in her. So all I do is, is just take, and you can do it like in the kennel or whatever, but I just tie her up really close here. And usually what I, she's out in the kennel, so all I do is just feed the, feed the leash through the, through the wire and snap and pull her head real tight to the wire. Then I take the leash and feed it through the wire the other way and put it right up under her midsection, like at her haunches, and pull that lead up. So now she's where she can't move her front and she's tied right to the wire right there. Well, as the pups are big enough to stand and reach her, then you just let the pups with her and they'll just get up on her and just empty her out. They're so strong at that point that they just suck her dry like in five minutes or 10 minutes at the most. And then you're not worrying about the mama being aggravated by them pups working on her. Another thing that, that's smart to do is when when these pups like when they're this size or bigger and they're they're nursing off of her the whole time they're take they're they're scratching her with their paws to like get get traction and it, these these little toenails are like needles okay just take a toenail or fingernail clipper and just nip the ends of them off so that they're not scratching her raw. If you if you feel them down across your hand, they're like razors, they're so sharp. Well, just, just nip them off, and that way then they're not hurting her. So this is a different litter here. These these are uh, out of Big D semen here in Bella. These pups are like 40 days old, and they've been away and totally weaned for like a week now. Um, this. This box here is uh, set up to, you know, I, I used to whelp pups in here, but I just use it as the puppy box now. There's a there's a heated nest in the middle, just like on the ones on the outside, and uh, a light bulb in there to, uh, you know, just supplement some heat for them. And it's a big box, so, uh, so to keep a little bit of heat in there for them, keeps them comfortable, and they're, they're as you can see, they're, they're thriving. I like to have, a, I feed them that mixture of, uh, you know, the deer meat and the, and the dog feed, and then plus, I, I keep an automatic feeder full of dry feed for them, just, just in case that they get this ate up, and I, I never want them to be, you know, without food available for them if, uh, if they're hungry, so. Well, I'd like to thank everybody for supporting my breeding program and everything through the years here, and I just wanted to try to give back to other breeders out there uh, the, the stuff that I've learned through the years here. I don't know at all. I'm still trying to, to, to learn new things all the time, but the, I'm sure that, um, you know, there's maybe some tips in here that might help you save some pups that are in trouble or just at least help them make them make them thrive for you uh, like I said before I'm, I'm not a veterinarian and there's there's things in here that you may want to consult your veterinarian about but I can assure you the things that I told you in here I have done over and over and over through the years that will help you 
in the process here of having a nice healthy litter year round.